Hello everybody. Welcome, welcome. How are you all? I see a few people watching. I don't see who yet. So say hi. Let me know who's here. What you're up to today. I have some new products to show you. So I'm excited about that. I haven't even really looked at them myself, so we'll look at them together. All right, nobody's, everybody's being shy. <laughs> so we'll just wait just a minute. Well, I will go ahead and get started. Oh, hi. Hey, Louisa. How are you? Good to see you. And hi, Denise. How are you feeling, Louisa? Louisa just had back surgery, so great to see you. How are you feeling? Hope you're doing well. Nice to see you. All right, well, welcome everyone. I'm going to go ahead and get started. If you're watching live, it's great to see you. And if you're watching the replay later, then um, thank you so much for watching. So uh, as you can see today, I've got a little stack of new products to show you. So that's exciting. And, um, and then the card we're making today, I will give you a quick glimpse and then we can look at some new stuff. So remember last week we made, I made a Zinnia card and I made one more. And this isn't the one that I'm going to make, we're going to make today. Um, but I made one more because I was kind of had everything out and I thought I had this idea and I thought I might just as well make one but then I thought um, that I hadn't done an Easter card yet and I know Easter's only a few days away so I did decided to switch things up a bit and make an Easter card with the Easter lilies um, so this is the card um, I'm going to make today I'm gonna maybe change things just a little bit but it's basically gonna be this card so before I get into that though, let me show you a few of, so this is our lovely new catalog. I can't show you inside yet. You can see I've already spiral bound mine so that I can find my, so I can lay it flat. And then um, I have a team a meeting for my local team on Saturday. So I told them we'll bring your catalogs and we'll spiral bound them. I have a binding machine that I borrowed from my church. I have it kind of on long term loan because they don't really use it. So it's very handy. Um, so that's the new catalog um, and we'll be able to as demonstrators we'll be able to order this from uh, the pre-order from it on April 2nd so if you really want to get your hands on some of this stuff early the way to do it is to sign up and become a demonstrator you can get $125 worth of products for $99 and free shipping and then you'll um, have a head start on everybody so let me know if you'd like more you can put in the comments if you'd like more information on that and I'll reach out to you um, so a few new um, a few new things that I have to show you and I haven't even looked at these um, yet really and you've probably seen I know some demonstrators like to do this big unboxing of all their new products and um, I never seem to have time to do that but I thought I'd give you a sneak peek of a few I like to focus during April on products uh, my favorite products that are retiring so that you have a last chance to get those um, and um, so anyway we'll see but anyway here are the new in colors I'm sure you've seen these all by now um, petunia pop which is a lovely kind of purpley pink um, it's mostly pink with a, just a little bit of purple we've got pretty pretty in pink which is a returning color and I don't know that they've ever done this before brought back um, an in color a returning color is an in color so everyone's super excited about that because it's it's a really nice pink um, it's just a pink pink um, we've got shy shamrock which is almost like a it's not quite a Kelly green but it almost is but it's a lovely green and we've got peach pie um, and which is peachy peachy color it's kind of like a darker you know we have petal pink which has kind of a peach tint hint to it so this is a darker version and then we've got summer splash which is somewhere between like pool party and coastal cabana maybe it's kind of a lovely bluey green um what color you'd like your swimming book or pool to be probably <laughs> or something so anyway those are the new in colors and i'm looking forward to um working with those soon i'm working on a project to do with my team on saturday um so i'll show you those in my next facebook live um so let me put those to one side 
So I thought I would show you a couple of stamp sets that I ordered and um, bundles. This one, Attention Shoppers. Um, this one, um, a British demonstrator, um, Michaela Tithridge did a demonstration using these and she did such cute cards this is so much fun because you can put any of these items that you like in the shopping cart and there are dies to match um and you could put other things in that are from your other stamp set like I, there's that crafting for you stamp set i think it would be fun to put some crafting items in here for another for a fellow crafter and there are dies that match and then there's this bundle which I'm really excited about because this stamp, let me show you, is really big. So I don't know if you can see, sorry about the, but let me put it against something. Let me put it against something white maybe. It's kind of hard to see, but this stamp takes up nearly the whole, um, it's like, you know, it's big. So it's going to take up nearly a whole card front. And we don't really have a big stamp set like that. So I'm excited about that. And there's dies that match. And there's stencils or masks as we call them. So um, we had a one in the mini. I can't think what it's called. But we'll be able to do all kinds of things with it. We'll be able to, you know, die cut, um, color with blends, watercolor, heat emboss, a stencil, or mask, you know, sponge, all kinds of things. So I'm excited to try that one out. And that has the matching dies too. Um, and here's some embellishments that are really pretty. I just grabbed a few things out of, at about 10 to 12. I thought, oh, I know it's going to grab some things to show everybody. So I just pulled a few out. Um, these are really pretty. They're called Basic Grey and Smoky Slate Pearls. And you know me, I love neutrals. So these are going to be really fun to use on things because they're not quite silver. They're just kind of a little bit grey, but they're shiny still. So really nice. Um, this stamp set um, I love. Um, and there's some lovely samples in the catalog. And I think you could do so many fun things with these. I love the dolphins. You can have those a silhouette jumping out the ocean against uh, against a sunset or something. Um, I can see lots of possibilities with this, so I'm excited to, under the moon it's called, so I'm excited to try that. Um, we have, and it's funny because it didn't say the size in the catalogue and people were saying when they received this, wow, it's really big. Look at this embossing folder, and I think there's a couple that are this size. So this is really big, it's, um, what size is it? It's almost the same size actually, let me grab... It's almost the size as same size as a cutting plate that goes through your die cut machine. So it will still it still will run through a regular machine, but it's almost the same size. And people were saying, well, what would you use that for? So I think scrapbookers may be excited. And what I was thinking was I always like it when I'm prepping for a class or something, and I can put more than one piece of cardstock in a die cut machine at one time um that's really cool so yeah you could do if you just needed a small portion you could do multiple pieces of cardstock in but it's really cool so i'm looking forward to trying that out and then we have some circle dies in another bundle um that someone was saying might be able to they're not designed to go together but might be able to do something fun with them so that's that. And then the only other thing I was going to show you was some, some new paper. Um, so this is called Thoughtful Journey. And it's a 6 by 6 stack. So I thought this would be easy to take out quickly and show you. And this is part of a suite called Thoughtful. I think the suite is called Thoughtful Journey. I'm not sure. Um, I did not get the stamp set yet. Although I just looked at it and I thought, I wonder why I didn't get that. But um, I must have just had... Too many things in my cart already. So um, beautiful watercolory designs on the front. So pretty. Look at the lovely colors. Um, and I know some people have a hard time. One of my team, um, she didn't want this one because she has a hard time figuring out how to use. Um, just messed up my 
I had to put a, a quick coat of something on my nails because they look so terrible and I just messed one up. But never mind. Um, <laughs> anyway, she has she struggles to know what to do with scenes like this, but other people really like them and there's lots of different things you can do with them. And for just a quick, easy card, just add some matte layers and a sentiment and, um, you know, a little bit of thread or embellishments and you're good to go so it's great for making some quick and easy cards like if you wanted some sympathy cards or something so really pretty and then the back um, is all these just more kind of solid well not so much detail oh look at that one that's really pretty there so um, yeah beautiful so I love paper like this look at that one see that one be nice just for a background for something pretty so anyway that one is called thoughtful journey um, and it's a six by six um, and of course i'll be doing a paper share or product shares um, coming up in the beginning of may so stay true if you're on my email list you'll be getting information about that and if you're not in my email list and you'd like to be um, please leave me a comment and i will send you a message to get you can just leave your email if you're comfortable with leaving that or i will send you a message and get your email address from you and then usually when i go back and edit the fit my facebook live if you go back to a previous facebook live you can find a link to sign up for my email too okay so let's get started on today's card and so this is the card and let's see first of all we need to do some stamping so I have my, now it is really useful if you do have a stamp positioning tool for this. It's not essential, but um, the reason I like to use one is because I'm going to be using watercolor paper here. And it's not super smooth like basic white is. And so what um, tends to happen is that you don't get a really good image the first time you stamp. So I like to do it several times over. Let me just look at the comments. Denise says she struggles with those as well. Oh, that is, yeah, the pa those papers. Maybe I'll have to um, do something with those coming up then, those papers to give you some ideas. Um, all right, so I have a piece of watercolor paper and let's see, what did I do with the packet? I was going to show you what, oh, here it is, what the watercolor paper looks like, how it comes. It comes in a packet like this. It's called Fluid 100 Watercolor Paper. You get, um, what do you get? You get 10 pieces of five by seven. Um, and so I've got this in my Stamparatus. If you have a Stamparatus, you can use that. If you have a different um, ink positioning tool, you can use that. Um, if you don't have an ink, uh, ink positioning, stamp positioning tool, I'm just using a little bit of embossing powder, embossing buddy, anti-static powder. Um, if you don't have a stamp positioning tool, what I just suggest is that you make sure that your um, Versamark ink pad is really um, inky. So if you have a refill, re-ink it and make sure it's really juicy and then just hold the stamps down on the cardstock with some even pressure for a little while just to make sure that you get a good image. Um, so and... The thing is with photopolymer stamps, it's actually better to do multiple layers, ink it up multiple times rather than pressing really, really hard. Because if you press really hard with photopolymer stamps, they can distort and become just kind of blurry. You won't get such a fine, um, crisp, detailed image. So it's best, even with like a black sentiment, um, often if it's got a lot of detail, I'll do ink it up multiple times and press lightly rather than um, just doing one time and pressing really hard because you don't get such a good image. So, but there are lots of, um, I'm, it's sad that we don't have the stamp artist anymore, but there are lots of other ones on the market for, for varying sizes and prices. Okay, that should be good. Now, you won't be able to see this, obviously, um, right now. Yeah, but I'm going to put some white embossing powder on, and you still won't be able to see it, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Let me grab my embossing powder. And then we're going to do this kind of lazy watercoloring technique. I call it lazy. I'm not a good watercolor 
not a good artist really. I like to, I can copy and do a few things, but so I'm using white embossing powder. I can't even see where my, oh, there's one image. That's the big one. Um, my white embossing powder is getting really low and I have some more, but I don't want to put the new, I don't want to add the new one to this because um, you probably can't see, but I've got lots of little black specks in here that have accumulated over time from using it at class and things like that. See, there's lots there. And so I kind of want to start out with some nice clean white. So I don't want to, I'm waiting till I get really, really low. And then I'll probably just throw the last little bit away um, and start out with some really nice clean white. All right. So now I'm going to, Zap this with the heat gun to one side. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Do you see that right there? All right, so let me do this. I've been using my heat gun earlier, so it should still be warm, hopefully. Actually, let me... There's a little bit on that flower, this large flower here that maybe didn't get... Really well. I'm just going to see if I can put a lot extra on there. It might just be the way the stamp is. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think that's just the way it stamps. I think we're good. All right. Let's see, put that away. So here we go. I hold it up to the camera. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Like I probably can't do it now because it's probably dried, but it looks like I missed a top, the top of um, that big branch. Fortunately, I've done some ahead and got them already die cut, so you're probably thinking, oh, this is going to take forever, but I do have some already done, so that's better. I missed a couple of little bits. So I don't know if you'll be able to see, see if I can get an angle. There you go. Can you see a little bit? When we start to watercolor, you'll see. All right. And I didn't even show you the stamp set. So this is the stamp set. It's called Easter Lilies. And it is retiring. So it's only going to be around for another month at the most. And I nearly didn't do this card today because, sadly, the dyes um, are not available anymore. And so I learned that this morning and I thought, oh no, should I still do the card? But I figured that this technique, I mean, you actually, the stamps would not be, these ones would not be really, really hard to fussy cut if you don't mind fussy cutting. And also um, you can apply this technique to any other kind of outline image, any other floral outline image. So I figured I would still go ahead and do it. But yeah, unfortunately, the dyes um, are gone, I think. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I just, there we go. So I'm going to bring in my, um, my silicone mat that came with the, um, let's see, let's put this this side maybe, like that. Um, that came with the glass mat and I'm using the this little these little areas as my palette and then I've got some reinkers I've got um, bubble bath blackberry bliss which we'll use later and granny apple green and you can see I've already been doing this and there was no point me cleaning up because I'm just going to continue to use the same colors uh, and then I've also got um, a water brush and these come in a pack of three and they just feel they're just like a brush with kind of a hollow um what do you call this 
kind of a hollow tube on the end that you, where you can put water or alcohol, whatever you like. So I'm going to be using that. I think I'm going to do this this way around, actually. <laughs> um, so, and I'm going to grab a paper towel real quick because that's handy too. And even though this has got water in, I like to have a little pot of water. I'll put this up here. Uh, here's my, here's my, um, I'll put this up here so you can see. Um, just because it's a bit easier to clean off the brush rather than having to squeeze water out through it. So I've got everything ready. So let's make sure my brush is clean. I'm going to just dry it off just a little bit on my paper towel. And then I'm going to pick a flower. Um, so I'm going to start with, and I know you can't see it right now, but you'll see it once I start to color. So I'm going to start with um, this one right here. And I'll tell you what I'm doing. So I'm basically, my brush is wet. I dried it off just a little bit. And I'm just basically putting water all over the image. So this is, I think this is called like a wet on wet technique if you're a water coloring. So I'm just making sure that that's wet. And then I'm going to drop um, one uh, another couple of drops of bubble bath onto my palette here. And I'm actually going to use this full strength because bubble bath is very light. Um, and I'm just going to take a pick a little bit on my brush and then I'm going to just dab it into the bottom here of the flower. And it's just going to spread itself a little bit. Um, and then I'm just letting it kind of do its thing. And I can dry it, dry it off a little bit if I like. And then I'm just going to kind of spread out into the leaves so I want that kind of you know those lilies that are darker pink at the bottom and um, kind of lighter at the top and you can go back in and put a little bit more if you want it even darker if you want a little bit more you know graduation and I can go back in later and add a little bit more if I want and you will see all the detail a bit you know more once it's die cut and I have some that are already done and die cut so you'll be able to see those okay let's move on to this one up here which is going to be that large flower this one so i know this is a bit hard for you to doing that one next hard for you to see um and i didn't think about that when i was planning this but so well i don't really need to clean off my brush but anyway so i'm going to add water all over the image again and the nice thing is because you're heat embossing it's keeping the um, it kind of helps you to stay in the lines. You know, the, 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 the water doesn't run outside the, the heating embossing, embossing generally. I may have missed a little bit here, so it may, it may run out a little bit, but we'll see. And then again, I'm just going to go back into the um, bubble bath and just dab some in. Give it a little bit more water. And then I'm just going to work kind of out a little bit again so i'll have that darker center but this is super easy like i'm not a watercolorer at all watercolorer is that a word but i think this is very easy to do and then i can just again i can kind of clean my brush a little bit if i want and then just bring this color out to the edges of the petals and like i say it's a bit hard for you to see right now because and go in with a little bit more I think um, because you can't see the outline but when I started to, to do a card I, I did with I did it with a um, a black um, black memento in fact I'll show you and I just didn't like how it looked it was too harsh for a kind of a soft lily flower so I thought well, what else could I do and then I thought well maybe I'll watercolor um, and then you would do the same thing um, again with this one here. This is the one with the two kind of buds, this one. Um, so again, just pick some up, put it in at the bottom, kind of let it do its thing. And you can even tip, if you've got a lot of water on there, you can even just tip it and let it flow to the... So 
so again I can put a bit more colour in the bottom if I want it a bit darker so you get the idea now let's do some green um, and I think I've got enough now this is granny apple green and I did dilute it just a little bit because it's much stronger so I'm doing the um, some of the leaves so you'll see so I'm going to pick up just a little bit of the granny apple green put that in just at the tips and then again I can kind of if I want to just keep it fairly light I can just pull out some of the color like that that's pretty isn't it so if you can see how they're looking so far um, and then this big one um, is a little tricky because there's lots of little leaves to to fill in but I'm going to do my best so whoops going to fill in and the nice thing is um, because you've got a white outline it's very forgiving when you die cut it you know it's if it's not perfect it's not the end of the world so I'm probably putting water where I don't really need it but I'm trying to not take too long and then again I'll just come and drop some little bits of green kind of in at the base of these leaves can't really see where all <laughs> the actual what's a leaf and what's supposed to be space but that's all right half of it's going to be hidden anyway and watercolor doesn't have to it doesn't have to be perfect does it and then again we can just pull out some of that draw out some of that color so that it's lighter on the tips let's see i'm not seeing if there's any comments Oh, yeah. Nedra says it comes to life. Yeah. And when it dries, it will dry a little paler. So um, if you want to go back in once it's dry and um, pour in some more, you know, add some more color, you can. All right. So that's kind of what it looks like right now. So I have some. Let me just clean off the brush. I'm going to keep this out because I'm going to need that in a minute. So let's put that to one side and I'll show you the ones that I've already got die cut. So these I did earlier. And you can see they're a little bit paler. Um, and that's pretty much how, how they were. But they're going to dry out a little bit cool, um, paler. So you could go back in and add just a little bit if you wanted. We could just go back in and add you know, a little bit more color if you want. Ooh, that looks pretty. There's nothing to stop you doing that. Ooh, that looks nice. So we could do that on all of them. Oh, and I on the um, bottom I forgot to do. Oh, that's the one from yesterday. Here's one which ha where I have colored the green. Um, you want to go back in and color the the stems. Um, green some of them may not show you may they may end up being tucked underneath but anyway those look pretty and then here's this one and then I actually did a couple of these because I wasn't sure if I wanted to use this one I was going to play around with the design a little bit um so then um I was going to add some oh actually let's first oh no we can do this now so I was going to add some little splatters you know how lilies have those little kind of splatters speckles on them sometimes is it the tiger lilies or something i don't know um so lilies are beautiful but is there anyone here that's allergic to lilies i know lots of people are um and they and then, then the pollen gets everywhere doesn't it the pollen off the little stamen is that what they're called the stamens so um Lilies are all tricky. They're beautiful, but I know not everyone can, can handle them. All right. So now let's just do, um, I've, got, I've got some Blackberry Bliss here because I thought that would be a nice contrast. And I'm going to do a little practice. Oops. Need a little bit more water. There we go. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of splattering. It's all going on there grid paper and none on the flowers so far 
There we go. I think that's good. Don't want to overdo it. And then what you can also do. Um, actually, I think I'm going to need that again, so I'm not going to worry about cleaning it off too much. Um, what you can also do is you can take um, a Blackberry Bliss um, blend, and what I did with the thin end, I coloured in some of the little. You can color over the embossing powder. So I colored in some of the little, I don't know if you can see it very well there, but on this one, on the card, can you see how I colored in the little stamen, stamens? Is that what they are, the, the little things? Or the stamen might be the little stem part. I don't know what these are called. My Some of my splotches got a bit big and I did them a different way on the other card, so I think I like the other way better. I'll show you the other way in a minute. Um, all right, so let's put this aside. And let's work on the card. So I've got um, my card base. And so I've got a white, uh, white, uh, basic white thick card base, just a regular card base. And then I've got a piece that's... Um, four by five and a quarter and I've got my stylish shapes dies and I'm going to take the largest square and I'm going to run that through um, I'm just going to put it so that's even gap at the top and the sides and I'm going to run through that that through my um, embossing machine die cut machine so I'm just going to turn around and do that quickly my dog up I had to barricade um, Sylvie out of my craft room this morning because she kept getting into I've got stuff everywhere it's not her fault really because <laughs> I need to tidy up more but anything that's at her level she so some I had a box with some completed 3d items from over the last few months and she was getting into those and carrying around and oh my goodness I've got a little bit of a smudge on there if you get a little bit of a, a mark from your die cut machine from your plates you can usually just take an eraser and get rid of it there we go okay so this piece here let me bring back my i'm going to sponge a little bit can you see how this is sponged um so i need um balmy blue and bubble bath i'm going to do some quick sponging um, grab my brushes. I happen to have one large and one small because one I, one had light blue on it and then this one kind of looked like it was kind of pink. So, And I'm just going to do a little bit of kind of diagonal. And sometimes I don't like when the stitching around the edge gets really dark like that, but I actually don't mind it for this. I think it adds kind of to the, to the look to have that darker around the edge. So, oops, I'm off camera a little bit. Let me move up. So I'm zoomed in and this is gonna don't worry if you get if it doesn't look very even or you get a little mark like that it's gonna even out as it dries and half of most of it's going to be hidden actually and then some balmy blue so while I do this I will tell you a little bit about what's going on with me so um some of you who are on my email list would have already seen this but i'm actually and i've talked about this a little bit in the past i'm actually rebranding my business my new business name is going to be cards and sweets for a cause and i will be mostly donating my income to local nonprofits. And the nonprofit i'm going to be supporting initially which will come as no surprise to you is Central California Labrador Retriever Rescue, where we got Sylvie. So I will announce, um, you know, if I'm doing a specific class, um, that 
that that's what I'm doing. But um, the profit from my orders and my classes will be donated to Labrador Rescue. And it's a completely volunteer-run organization. Um, they don't have any paid staff. They just rely on volunteers. And they rely purely on donations for... Sorry, I'm off camera again a little bit for um, vet bills because they often have to have you know the animals spayed or they they have to have the shots and things like that so um, they rely mostly on donations uh, or solely on donations and for all their the dog food and other supplies beds leashes toys you know all that kind of stuff and they have a group of foster pet foster families that foster them that's what we were supposed to be doing but we ended up keeping her we do hope to foster some more down the road um but anyway that's kind of what i'm going to be doing so you will see some changes um in my business a little bit over the next few months um and let's see let's do the next so i'm going to do a few little splatters on here and i'll show you the other way you can do splatters which is just, you have to be a little bit careful. So, um, the well, there's two ways, but one, so you can use a blend and open the brush tip end. And if you have another one and you tap really hard, you will get some good, but you have to do quite hard, you will get some good splatters. Oh, and one thing I forgot to do too. Do you see those little splatters? The other way you can do it, which you've got to be super careful, is just tapping, flicking off the edge of the, um, you'll get some slightly bigger ones. But you've got to really be really careful about that because you can damage your um, your uh, nib. Someone at one of the on-stage demonstrators, demonstrations did that and everyone went, <gasps> <You know? laughs> um, right, the other thing I'm going to do is I thought this looked a bit plain, but I didn't want to emboss it. Um, with a with an embossing folder. So what I decided to do was I took my um, sc simply scored and oops, that's the wrong way around. And you want to put it in upside down, and then I just scored an at a quarter of an inch all the way around. So this is four, so I'm going to do three quarters of an inch, and I just went down twice. Now, you can do it here, but for me, if you're a lefty, you might be able to do that. But for me, it's really hard to score this. So I just do it on the right side and just keep rotating. So this is a five and a quarter. So I want to do it at five. And then again, oh, three and a, three quarters. And then at five. Okay. That's that. And then you end up with this kind of, can you see that? Yeah, you end up with some nice detail around the edge. It just adds a little something, but it's not too much. All right, let's, oh, and I've got to stamp the um, sentiment. So let me grab my, now, the funny thing about this stamp set is it's called Easter Lilies. Um, and there's lots of kind of Easter sentiments, but there's no Happy Easter <laughs> so I had to hunt for a happy Easter and I found one in the Easter bunnies. Um, let's see, where is that? This one, Easter bunny, which is also retiring. So um, cute bunnies that you could use for all kinds of occasions. So that is only going to be around for a short time too. So I'm going to stamp happy Easter. If you wanted to do this on like a little sentiment you know, label tag and put it on afterwards, you definitely could. I'm just going to go for it and hope that I get it straight. Looks good. And actually, you, you may notice on this one, I've got it on two lines because what I did was for another project, apparently I had cut this stamp in half, which is what I sometimes do. Um, and so I thought, oh, well, I'll just do them um, one on top of each other. But then for this one, I put them back together and I thought I would do it in a straight line. And I'll just, we can just see which one looks best. All right, now let's get on with the assembly. So this is going to get stuck down onto the card base. Now you could do a colored card base if you like, especially as this is so um, pale, um, you know, with our flowers. You could do, um, let's have a look. I'm going to pull out a couple. We can see. You could do bubble bath. Although the bubble bath, it's funny, the, the ink 
is not quite the same colour as the cardstock, but you could do bubble bar. Let's see, you guys can tell me which one you like best. There's bubble bar. Or we could do balmy blue. Balmy blue, where are you? Oh, let's see. Here's balmy blue. I could see how that one looks. But I don't think of that as so... Oh, that's pretty, though. Tell me which ones, which one you like best. Or we could do Granny Apple Green, which is kind of bright. <clears throat> so tell me which color you like best, and we'll go with that. <clears throat> How many people do it? Oh, we only... Yeah, we have a few. Hi, Cindy. <clears throat> so we could also do Granny Apple Green, which is... Oh, I look kind of like that one, actually, too. So what do you think? While I'm putting... Um, and dimensionals on the back of this one. Let me know which card base I should use. <clears throat> Whoops. On the zinnia one, I used white, but the zinnias were, were kind of bolder in colors. So I'm going to put a bunch of dimensionals. So yeah, let me know what color if you're if you're paying attention. <laughs> and we'll go with that. Into so quite a lot. You could use um, the strips. Here, you know that you the um what are they call the adhesive strips that are meant for doing your shaker cards. So anyone, 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 what color? I'm not getting any feedback at the moment. Let me take the backs off. I might have to pick. Anybody? Which color? Granny apple green, balmy blue, or bubble bar? Can you guys still hear me? Oh, here we go. Denise says blue. Anybody else? Oh, Nedra says green. Okay. We need at least one more. Cindy says mm, blue and green. Okay, green. All right, so green's winning. Anybody else? Looks like it's going to be green. Sorry, Denise. This would make it nice and cheery. Yeah, I think green it is. All right, so let's put this on. Like that. And then we'll take our sponged one. And you just need to decide... If you want pink down in that corner or blue down in that corner. Let's move my water out of the way. Clean up just a little bit here. I can move up. Um, so let's just grab. So this is going to go like this. This is going to go here. So we could do like that or I'll get hold of it now. Or like this. I think I like that better. So I'm going to do... Although I did blue the other, I don't know. Yeah, I think I like the blue at the, okay, I'm gonna do this pink at the bottom because there's a little splodge there. So I'm gonna use liquid glue. Put this in, and it makes it a bit easier to kind of slide it into position if you use liquid glue. Let me just pop that back. Oh, I've got a splodge on both sides, that's all right. Nobody will notice. That way you just slide that into place there. Give that a press down. Now we can add all our bits and pieces. So I did, here's all our pieces. So let's start arranging. Let's move these other card bases out of the way. Um, so on the other card, let me show you that one. Put that one there so you can see it. Um, I kind of did this and then you can just tuck these like that. But I wondered about just doing, not doing that big one and just doing some little ones. Let's see, I don't know, I might need that big one to kind of fill in. I don't like how this flower turned out quite so well as the other one. My, my um, splatters are spread a little bit too much. So... I think I probably will need, unless I just do like that, 
I'll just keep it really simple. That's kind of pretty, isn't it? Or so you can kind of play around with it how you like. We could do like this and do another one. I'll give that one lower. And we could do another one down here like that. Kind of like the other way. <laughs> so you can just play around. I don't know, is that too simple? Or do you like the... I think I like this one. It's too much pink. So yeah, let's do. Let's go with this. All right, so I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back here. But anyway, you can, you kind of get the idea. You can arrange things how you like. And so, as I said, this is, the stamp set is retiring. Um, and the dies, unfortunately, are no longer available. But you could definitely do this style of card with another floral image. So I'm just going to put this one on with dimensionals, but I'm not going to put dimensionals right there. Um, let's see. Oh, that's probably good. Um, and the lilies I figure are good for sympathy cards or birthday cards or think you know thinking of you. You can use them for a lot. So if you just wanted to get the stamp set, so I'm going to actually let me put the stem in first. So it might be difficult to pop in. So I'll just put this kind of like that I think, and I might need some minis. a couple will be fine um, and then I'll show you what I did for the inside of this one too so just kind of put like that and then I'll stick this one on something like that and then this one we can use this one like I did or we could do this one Maybe I'll do that one for this time and we can see. So do I need dimensionals? Probably not. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. So I think I'll just put some adhesive on here. Because it's already, it's already popped up. And I'm just going to try and cover up the bottom of that, this stem right here as it's kind of not hidden. Oh, I like that. That's pretty. So there's the two different ones and then the embellishment also what I did for inside I won't um, do it again um, take the time to do it again now but I did put another piece just to keep um, continue on with the layering kind of on the front I did put a smaller I don't know if you can see that that's a layer but it's a piece of um, four by five and a quarter and then I used that big stamp um, with granny apple green and just stamped on the corners and then I used the he is risen um, sentiment that is from the stamp set um, the font's not quite the same, but I think it looks fine. And then for embellishments, I used um, the Blooming Pearls. Um, and I used the pink. You could use the gold, too. Maybe I'll use the gold on this one. Um, the blue won't go with the green, I don't think, on this one. The blue, you could I could have used the blue on this. But I don't think it'll really go with the green. But I think I might use the gold, um, which will look pretty. And so, let's see. Grab my take your pick. Yeah, I like the green. It it, it makes it pop, doesn't it? Um, so we will do... Um, we'll do one here. There's two sizes, and one's quite big and one's quite small. And we'll do maybe a small one. Over here, I don't know, up here, I don't know. We could put a few more on, maybe dotted around, but you know me, I kind of get stressed over where to put the <laughs> embellishments. Um, okay, so that's um, the card. So yeah, this has kind of got a softer look and this one just pops a bit more. And then let's see, where's my zinnia one? 
um, here's the zinnia one and I did add actually a little linen um, linen bow and I just tucked it underneath you could definitely do that on these ones too so anyway I hope you'll give this this one I this one I put colored in a little bit different I did I started darker on the outside of the leaves and darker here and then paler towards the center and towards the bottom whereas this I kind of did the opposite I did darker in the center and worked out so you can kind of do which whatever way you like um, and I was going to show you um, quickly Let's see where's my I, I was going to show you what it looked like stamped in black so I kind of messed these up because I put some ink on top but this is what was like what I was going to first do stamped in black and I thought it was just too heavy unless I was going to color in with blends with some really big bold colors I wanted kind of a nice soft look so that's why I went with the embossing so there is still time to um, order um, the stamp set um, but not the dies unfortunately and of course the zinnia is still available and the easter bunny is still available but um, the zinnia is an online exclusive so that's going to be around for a while I think but the bunnies are going to go away um, soon also so anyway I hope you'll have a very happy easter or one thing I did when I was talking about my um, changing my business I'm going to pretty much be switching my Facebook lives to every other week or twice a month. I'll let you know what my schedule is going to be, but I'm also trying to cut back a little bit just so that I have a little bit more time for my family and some other things. We have a new grandbaby coming in June and we have a very busy travel schedule the next couple of months. So I'm just trying to um, just have a little bit more time for some other things. And um, although it, you wouldn't think that doing a Facebook Live <laughs> once a week is that much, but you have to plan for it, you know, prep for it, design for it, prep for it, and then I have to go back in afterwards and do all the editing and everything. So actually, and then send out my email on Saturday. So it actually does take quite a long time. So I'll be cutting back on that a little bit, but I'll still have lots of good stuff to show you. So anyway, I hope you all have a great rest of the week. Have a happy Easter, everybody. And um, I will not be back next week. I'll be starting my every other week or twice a month. I do. I have a, a dentist appointment for a new crown next week. So that's what I'll be doing um, when you would normally be watching me. So <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching, everyone. I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.